Well, my name is Simo Vaj. Um, I joined SUSE around two years ago just to work on uh, AutoJazz. And today I'm here to present you our brand new module, a brand new uh, Jazz module that offers some kind of integration between uh, AutoJazz and uh, configuration management systems like uh, SOLD. Um, first of all, I would like to start speaking about AutoJazz. Um, how many of you know about AutoJazz or use AutoJazz in your, well, quite some people, so I cannot lie. So um, the idea behind AutoJazz, it's a, a tool that allows us to perform unattended installations or system upgrades, okay? It also allows us to um, perform automatic configuration of already installed systems. It's not the most common use case, but it's also something that it's possible with AutoJazz. Um, it will take care of partitioning, network configuration, software installation. If you are using SUSE, it will take care of registering the system and all that stuff. And it's also able to configure additional services, like uh, you can install, for example, a DHCP server, an NTP client, or whatever. So it uh, performs the basic installation and also uh, it tries to, uh, it's able to configure and install additional services. That's the main idea behind AutoJust. The idea is pretty simple, well, well not simple. Uh, you write uh, a description of the system you want to install, okay? Uh, this is a, an XML document that um, define some sections. There are a lot of sections. These are some of them. Partitioning, uh, the partitioning layout that you want to use, the software selection, if you want to install some patterns or whatever. Uh, networking configuration, uh, static configuration, how many devices or a lot of things. You can also run scripts in different moments of, your inst of the installation. You can, you can also write configuration files, okay? So you can do a lot of things with uh, AutoJazz. Um, I like to see AutoJazz as some, it's, it's part of Jazz, so it just takes that profile and drives Jazz to make the installation that you have described in, the, in this document, okay? But I think, uh, uh, one thing that I like about AutoJazz is that you don't need to specify a lot of uh, configuration options. Uh, with this profile that just set up a root user that you can also um, omit some, some, some configuration. But with that setup, uh, it will take care of partitioning your system, configuring uh, the software selection, and all that kind of stuff. So you don't need to specify everything. And after all, it's just part of Jazz, so it will just behave like Jazz when it comes to default selections and all that things. Okay. When you want to write a profile, you can create one from scratch, copy and paste in from the documentation, copy and paste in from other profiles, or just write in your own. And you also have um, an auto Jazz UI that allows to inspect the running system and to tweak some parameters and generate a profile from your installing system. That is that we call clone a system. And you also have a command line that you just run. It creates a configuration that looks like your running system and you can uh, just adjust it. Or you can just create your uh, profile programmatically. Okay, you generate a profile that you fed later to AutoJust. But to be honest, we have some limitations with AutoJazz because the use case was not to, to cover all the configuration management thingy. So uh, it's limited to just modules. I mean, we don't have a module to manage Redis or to manage PostgreSQL, okay? And we don't want to have those, to have those modules. Um, so in those cases, AutoJazz enables to, you to create 
that configurations by writing, embedding configuration files or scripts in the profile. But to be honest, uh, when configurations or setups are complex, that's maybe not the way to go. Also, another problem is that uh, when you clone a system, uh, installation is not always 100% reproducible. If you configure something outside AutoJazz, of course, that won't be in the profile. But even if you use a script in your profile, when you clone the system, that, profile, that script won't be included. Okay, so you need to do it manually. Uh, well, and only applies to OpenSUSE and SUSE distributions. That's somehow a limitation. Okay. So let's put AutoJazz uh, down for a moment and talk about configuration management software. Configuration management software enables the administrator to configure and track changes in their infrastructure. Okay. Usually, the administrator creates some, some kind of description. It depends on the system, uh, how the system should look like. Uh, uh, the system will take care of installing packages and all that stuff. It's not that magical. Okay? It needs some work. But the, it's pretty good because uh, the deployment is automated and always reproducible. Okay? And in that part, is, is, uh, uh, they are, they, those tools do a, a great job. In the open source community, we have a lot of uh, options with a wide range of features from SALT, which is a complete system, uh, even driving and has a lot of features, uh, to things like um, Capistrano. It's, it's uh, quite narrow and it, it only makes one, it only does one thing, but it does extremely well. But here at SUSE, we are uh, pushing for SALT. Um, so is, as the previous speaker told, is uh, not only a configuration management system, but it also has a remote execution engine. So you can run uh, arbitrary commands on remote systems, and it also has a pretty powerful selection mechanism to select which commands should be run in which system. It's even driving. I must admit that I hadn't seen the talk uh, from Thomas before writing my slides. But yeah, I will highlight that it's even driving. It has a pretty flexible architecture. You can use a master server to, to get the configurations to the agents, okay? You can get rid of the master server and use some kind of standalone uh, configuration. Or you can get rid also of the agents and just configure the system using SSH or something like that. So you have many options. It has pretty good documentation, in my humble opinion. And they have an interesting library of reusable components. Um, okay, um, we'll say something about that in this slide. I'm going to oversimplify things a lot, okay? But I want just to, to show you some concepts that we are going to, to see when running the, the example. We could say that we have it's more complex, as I have said, but we could say we have two different roles. We have the master machines that uh, are the machines that say to the system that we want to manage what they, want, what they need to do. We have the minions, which are the system that we are managing. Uh, they usually they have installed um, um, a daemon um, and it receives instructions from the master. We have the concept of a state. It's the a state is a description of uh, what do you want to do with that system. For example, I want to install an Apache web server. You need to install this package. You need to run this server. You need to run to write this configuration file. That's uh, a state. Pillars are somehow like the um, the information that is used in the state, the configuration data, sensitive data. For example, if you are installing um, the HCP server, for example, you can have in the pillars the list of hosts with the MAC addresses and IPs and the correspondence. And then the, P the state will take that information from pillars and it will configure the machine according to that information. So we come to formulas. Formulas are reusable states. Usually they can, they can interpret information from pillars. So you, for example, can use a formula to install a PostgreSQL server and you define a pillar. 
in, in your pillar, you define some options so you can uh, set a different port or a different directory for data or whatever. You can configure somehow the, the state. And finally, we are not going to, to see grains again during this presentation, but just for sake of completeness, uh, grains is data associated to those agents, to those minions. This usually it's information from the underlying systems, but you can also set the custom grains on, on minions. So you have, you have here a simple example. Details are not that important, okay? It's an uh, state to install an Apache server. Uh, you install a package, you make sure that the service is running and you write a configuration file. It's not that important the detail, just take the general idea. So. If you have been paying attention, you maybe have find some kind of uh, redundancy between salt and auto jazz, right? Yes. Um, so the idea of this module is to get the best of both worlds. On the one hand, we would like auto jazz to make the initial installation because it's jazz. Just make some interesting decisions uh, and help to 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 have a, a a good installation with sensitive defaults and don't, that kind of stuff. And it's also able to install on hardware with, without any system. It's installing the base system. But when it comes to configure additional services, we are doing the same in AutoJazz and and in Salt. So all um, another configuration management system. So the idea would be maybe to draw a line and leave out to just to make the initial installation, software install, initial software selection, network configuration if needed, partitioning, all that stuff will uh, be done by AutoJust. And so we'll perform the installation and configuration of additional services, okay? We know that we have at SUSE some, some, some people that use some kind of a script to download uh, some state and do it by hand. But uh, so we felt that we should uh, offer an, an, an option so they can use AutoJazz and configuration management systems in, a, um, in an easy way. So. This is a snippet from a jazz, um, an auto jazz profile. Okay, we, we tried to find a shorter name uh, which was uh, meaningful and without using uh, you know acronyms, but it was almost impossible. So you have configuration management section. We are saying that we want we want to use salt because we'll see later that we support uh, another system on some kind of experimental feature. We want the system to connect to that master, and we want to use the authentication keys that are in, in that uh, HTTP server. Uh, it's cool because you can use your, uh, you can have your authentication keys, it uses a public and private key, in your pen drive and plug it into the system, and it will search if you select USB device, it will serve for authentication keys in your, in your device. And also authentication keys are stored with the name of the host name. So you can save many of them in the same place. In this case, uh, those keys should be accepted in the, in the master server, but uh, in this case they are pre-accepted, which is one use case for salt. Okay? So I'm not going to do uh, a demo because, you know, uh, it's only half an hour, um, things can, can go wrong, uh, so I just uh, record a video and we'll check the video just to prove that it's, it works, okay? So, well, I'm going to stop for a moment. Uh, at this point, JAS has already done the installation of packages, has configured the network and all that stuff. The only remaining step, I think, is the bootloader. Um, and with that configuration, the module had installed salt packages during regular software installation, 
have retrieved keys and copied them to a special place so Salt can find them. And it also has um, updated Salt's configuration. So when you restart the system, Salt is properly configured to be uh, registered without Salt Master. Okay. So, yeah. Well, you have a pop up with a lot of debugging information. Uh, it's the runs, uh, the Salt running. Let's. Um, this state that I'm using here is pretty simple. It's just only about changing the message of the day, okay? But we'll see a more complex example later. So we have changed the, the message of the day from uh, the OpenSUSE system. And we just fast forward. And we reboot, it's uh, changing, right? So it works. We have another um, possibilities when configuring salt. Um, for example, maybe we don't have to, we don't want to have the pre-accepted keys. Then in, the, in that case, we can specify some kind of timeout and the system will try to connect to the salt master and we accept as administrator accept the key and it will retry later to, to, in order to get the configuration. And another way to use this module is masterless mode. Maybe you don't need a sole master in this case, you just have your states in a tarball, you have your pillars data in another tarball, and you say, okay, I'm not going to use a salt. I just want to use this state with this information and it will take care of installing salt, running salt with that information um, and configuring your system as easy as that. Okay. So I think that this one is the more interesting part, experimental features. Well, the first one is about Puppet. We support Puppet. Um, when we started to, to, to write this module, we wanted to support more than one uh, system just to make sure that it's flexible enough to add support for more uh, stuff if we need. Puppet support is not um, that tested, uh, so maybe it's buggy, and it does not have support for IERA. IERA is uh, something like pillars, but for Puppet, and we don't support IERA at this time. Um, during the last hack week, uh, Dakan Bambikar and me were working in SUSE Manager Parametrizable Salt Formulas Support. Okay, so these lines of code is a YAML, a YAML file. Uh, I have taken an example from Joaquin from his uh, blog post. I have changed the values a little bit. Um, that's data from a, from a pillar. So we have uh, data for the time zone. The name of the time zone is Atlantic Canary. Um, we want to use uh, UTC, okay? That's pillar data. SUSE Manager Parametrizable Salt Formulas um, allows the developer to build a user interface to get that information in a handy way for the, for the administrator or the user. Um, the idea is that you have a description like this one where you say, okay, I have two parameters for this pillar. I have a name of the time zone with some values uh, and I have a default value. And I also have another uh, field which is called UTC and with some default value. It's a Boolean, and that's fine. And with that information, you build this form, okay? So you have a, a form in a web application uh, with, the, um, with the name and the UTC fields. The administrator can fill those, uh, those controls and it will be written to the pillar and used when deploying the system. So we have support for something like that in, in, in this module. 
If the module finds that some of the formulas you are using has this kind of description, it will bring a user interface so you can put the values that you want and the system will be installed with those values. So let's see another video. Well, the the stage I'm using here, the state I'm using here, it also changes the method of the day. Uh, it uses a test formula with a lot of uh, fields, so you can see um, the different kind of controls that you can define. And it also installs some package and some 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 more things just to to prove that we can install packages with zipper and all the things. Well, we have found two formulas, okay, and both of them contain some information. We are going to check both of them because we can apply and tweak both of them. So that guy is going to, to move the, the screen a little bit, checking, browsing for the different options, nothing interesting at all. But you can see that uh, we have different controls, input, uh, select boxes, text fields, uh, booleans. We are going to change the, the message of the day here by hand. It's not written in the in the pillar yet. And now the module will take care of merging that information and deploying the system. Um, for example, here is running Zipper. In the first version, Zipper didn't work. Uh, and now you have the, the message updated. So that's it. Okay, so let's close this. The future. I must say that I would like to, I would love to use your use cases because we have gathered some, some use cases and um, if you are in, at the conference at the end or will stay around, so just tell us if you, if you want some use cases that you would like to be supported. Some wild ideas. None of wild, those wild ideas is, is going to become a reality anytime soon. Or, or maybe anytime. For example, I think that you, we, will, we need to do is to improve the integration with the installer because you get a ugly pop-up with a lot of information running. Well, we should uh, include that information in the not in a pop-up but in the storage itself. Uh, well, look, uh, it should look nicer. Support in the AutoJS UI because in the AutoJS UI you cannot specify uh, any value for sold or something like that. Maybe cloning support. It's a little bit tricky, but uh, maybe we'll try to, to add cloning support. Supporting Jira for Puppet because it's the only missing piece for, for this uh, module to be, for this adapter to be somehow complete. And maybe support for Git, so you don't have to, to use towers. Git is not the, available in the installation system, but it's available in the install system, so maybe we can make it. Um, but well. Even the formulas uh, is not a finished feature because um, we are not sure if we should put it at the end of the installation, at the beginning. If you, if you put the formulas at the beginning, then you need to do some um, work in advance. So it's um, a feature, there is a feature request, but it's not being finished. It's not finished. And finally, I would like to thank some, some people First of all, my, my beloved Justin, because uh, the module was born uh, last year in a cloud internal workshop at SUSE. But the Justin has adopted the module, is now official part of Just, and we are all taking care of, of, of this module. To Duncan McVicker because, uh, for his contributions and help to, to, to to know a little bit more uh, soul and, and that kind of stuff. Hannes Kuhnhemun, because when I first joined uh, SUSE, um, I found out when I was working with AutoJazz that uh, kind of um, redundant, redundancy I was talking before. Um, I talked to my manager and my manager said, okay, let's uh, write a feature request. Um, let's see, put it down 
write it down so we can discuss about that. Uh, I didn't uh, in, the, in the following weeks, but I found out that someone did it for me. So that was some discussion and the faith request was already there, so I had some information to start working on. And of course, to the OpenSUSE project for giving me the opportunity to, to present our new module to you this morning. Um, I think that's all. If you have any question, please. Hi. Is it working? Yeah. So that were some nice videos that look good. One question that came to me was, is it also working with N curses? Yes, it works with N curses. Uh, there's a video, in, I can paste you a link later um, on, the, on the slides, and there's a video of the formulas running on, on N curses. It's, you have to manage to not have too, too, many, you know, too many levels, too many controls in the same page because it's a tree. But with the tree, we can do it well. Thanks. So thank you so much for driving this. Um, just for everyone who is not quite familiar with the overarching idea I have behind this whole formulas with forms, the cool thing about this is that the same fr framework is also working in the web front end in SUSE Manager. So let's say you have just created a very new NoSQL database, not because there aren't enough yet. And you want to make sure that people can set up the 10, 15 parameters that you have to set up to configure a database. You just write a salt state, put it into a folder, then it's a formula. Um, you write this form, which is basically just annotated YAML, where you say, okay, this is a, a password, this is a drop-down, and those are the values. And then you have a YAS module, and you have integration in SUSE Manager, and you can run it on the command line as part of your salt runs. That's really the, the great new thing, that for the first time, we have a framework that spans one-to-one -one YAS installation, where people sit in front of a UI, um, down to fully automated rolling this out in the cloud on thousands of nodes. Um, with one framework. That's this really cool thing. Now, uh, for crazy ideas, the last thing um, that, that came to my mind that would make this really, really cool is that currently, let's say if you have this values box here, you have to provide those values in this uh, uh, dropdown. But if we had a callback where we just put a line of salt code in there that says, look at the box and grab whatever... Um, I don't know, let's say network devices are on the box, or in that case, read the uh, existing uh, time zones file and give me all the time zones that you can actually configure. That would, of course, be very, very cool. And I think it's, it would be possible the way the framework is set up because you can just, when the code is running, call into salt and, and, and return a list of, of stuff that you then feed back into the UI. We'll try. So if there's no more questions, you have one minute left to, to make whatever you want. Thank you. <laughs>